in the Houston area here. And we won't read the Epistle and Gospel, it's a bit late right now, we won't read the Epistle and Gospel, but still a few considerations today on this 22nd Sunday on the reading of sacred scripture. So the scripture reading today is from the book of Daniel. We begin the reading of the book of Daniel, and the beginning of the book of Daniel, he was a prophet 600 years before the coming of Christ, in a time of great crisis in the time of Israel. In fact, the time of Daniel is very, very similar to our time. It was a time of the ending of the fifth age of the Old Testament, the age of the decline, or the beginning, actually, of the fifth age. The age, the age of the decline began during the time of, of Daniel, the fifth age, the age of the decline of the Jewish people in their understanding of the Messiah. And it was a transition period when the Jews had to be taken to captivity for 70 years. And when we begin the book of Daniel, it says that and Nebuchadnezzar came to Israel and he conquered Israel. And he conquered Israel because of the sins of the Jews. And then, but then it is pointed out in the very first chapter of Daniel, chapter the book of, book of Daniel, chapter one. We read the breviary today, and God handed the Hebrews, God handed the Jews into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. And we must understand in our present crisis in the Holy Roman Catholic Church that there are two causes of our crisis. One is the so two reasons we are in a great crisis right now. The communists have taken over the church and infiltrated the church. The modernists have infiltrated the church. Wicked leaders and bishops and popes amongst us. And wickedness, we are handed over to the, to the, to the, to the nations, to the Gentiles. And the church has lost its power and its glory throughout the entire world. And why is this? The first reason is because of the sins of Catholics. And right now, in Catholic tradition, in the Society of St. Pius X, we are undergoing a great spiritual, supernatural collapse. The faith is going out from our people. Modernism is filling our people's souls. And they're being pulled away from God. And the first reason is because they don't love Him. And the first reason is because they're not living according to His gospel. And it is a punishment for our sins. And the second, remember, it is God who hangs us over. Remember that no one has power over Israel except the Jews. And no one has power over the Catholic Church except the Catholics. So when the Catholics are attacked by those that are not Catholics, they have to, there's no chance that the enemies of God have. Unless the Catholics sin, and unless the Catholics are handed into the hands of the enemy. And this is what has happened right now in the last 50 years, 60 years since Vatican II. The church is in the hands of the enemy. And one of the signs of it right now is the recent Amazon Synod. And it's interesting, the reaction against this Amazon Synod, it only ended a week or two ago, and the, the Synod of... Um, of the uh, Amazon held with 180 bishops with uh, Pope Francis in the city of Rome and uh, concerning the Amazon region in Brazil and South America and that, uh, and that the, there's a problem with the church there, people not going to church and a shortage of priests and difficulties and therefore what must we do? And they gathered together in a synod for the, for the Amazon and several multiple proposals were made. And one of course is that we need to have married priests Proposal for married priests, a good men to be taken from the Amazon region and made married priests, which is against the tradition of the Catholic Church in our Latin rite for the last 2,000 years, a great violation of tradition. And they're going to have married priests. And then secondly, the mention of deaconesses is finally made for the first time in an official, quote-unquote, official document of the modernist church, of the conciliar church. We must consider the possibility and study the possibility of deaconesses and then so that on the path, of course, of women becoming priests, and then thirdly, they were going to need to have a new Amazonian rite, a special rite of mass for the Amazon region. And, other, and then, of course, be aware of the ecology, uh, of, the, of the taking care of the environment, the ecological crisis throughout the world, and the church has to be uh, involved with ecology. And then, of course, a recognition of all of the, the good of, the, of the, the pagan religions of the Amazon. Some sacrileges and blasphemies took place during the Amazon Synod. So that Pope Francis went into Pope St. Peter's in a procession with the, the, uh, the statue of the gods or goddesses of the Amazons, some of their the statues, <clears throat> and then with the pagans and animists into the cathedral, making a sacrilegious entrance into the cathedral of St. Peter's in Rome, <clears throat> a, a great sacrilege. And then, of course, the, that this is a trying to make the Catholic Church become somewhat pagan. The Catholic Church becoming like a pagan church heading in the direction of paganism, not just in the direction of ecumenism towards Protestants. 
For this is considered a very great scandal. And several priests and bishops have stood up against it, notably Bishop, uh, Bishop Schneider, Athanasius Schneider, who, uh, uh, the Kazakhstan bishop, who has been speaking out very much against the synod, Cardinal Burke, another one, and other conservative priests in the Namashoro. Furthermore, they are trying to join hands with the conservatives of the Catholic movement to fight against this grave error of this Amazon synod. But here are some challenges. What is the grave evil of Pope Francis? What is the grave evil of Pope Francis? Francis is not the grave evil. Francis is not a scandal. All that Francis is, is Vatican II in 2019. That's all. There is nothing that Francis has done that is not done by his ancestors in the last 50 years since the council, now almost 60 years since the council. There is nothing that, is, that he's done that has not been done by his ancestors, such as, for instance, sacrilegious religious ceremony in St. Peter's. The Pope before him was Pope Benedict, Cardinal Ratzinger, still alive. And Cardinal Ratzinger, when he was Pope Benedict, before he resigned his charge, Pope, Pope Benedict it offered also pray with the pagans in Assisi. In, in, uh, in uh, 2011, and, and, uh, and there was a third Assisi meeting in which he prayed with pagans and even atheists and did sacrilegious works. And then Pope John Paul II, before him, did sacrilegious worship with the pagans everywhere in the world. He traveled all over the world in order to do sacrilegious, blasphemous ceremonies with pagans on every continent, and in the islands of the Pacific, and in the islands of the Caribbean. And in South America, in North America, in Asia, and in Europe, every place, John Paul II found a way to do pagan worship. He had the dung of, 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 uh, put on his forehead in Assisi. He, he worshipped with the Muslims and Rome itself at their mosque. He took off his shoes and so on. He worshipped with other pagans in Africa and also throughout the world. And this was not considered a great scandal by the conservatives of the Catholic Church. But when Pope Francis does it, it's a great scandal. The Pope Francis does this, it's horrible. And, th and there's a statement of Archbishop Schneider in which he says, just a couple of weeks, just a week ago, just very recently, Archbishop Schneider says that, that the church is trying to be brought into a new direction. They're going to bring the church in a new direction. The church is now going to be uh, worshiping and, uh, like unto the pagans. And they're trying to take away the Catholic church's motive and, and, and work. So the Catholic Church is made to convert the world to Christ, says Bishop Snyder. And they asked him, what about a new, new right? We're talking about having an Amazonian right. Is it okay to have a new right in the church? And Archbishop Snyder said, well, there can in theory be a new right in the church. But the, right, the new right of the church, if it's going to be a local right, must have extirpated from it everything pagan. Everything pagan must be extirpated from it. It must be made a spiritual right that is directed towards God and the worship of the true God and to bring souls towards the true God. And there should be no ambiguity in this right. And we find the Amazonian proposals uh, a direction of the church towards paganism. We find ambiguity in the communication of the faith. And therefore, this new right is the most grave scandal. And what Archbishop Schneider said was very good, very true, except for one minor problem. That morning, before doing the interview, Archbishop Snyder celebrated the Nova Soto Mass. And he still celebrates the Nova Soto Mass and is a priest of the Nova Soto Church. And when he celebrated the Nova Soto Mass, he celebrated a Mass which has ambiguity in it. The very consecration of the Mass. The actual consecration is ambiguous. It is not clear in the new Mass whether it is a narrative or Christ is really being made present. So there's ambiguity in the new rite. And this ambiguity is there in that new rite, and Archbishop Snyder celebrated it. And then there is, it, there is also a, a profession of a, a faith other than that of Christ, other than the theology of the Mass. So the Cardinals Helviani and Bacci, in the only official explanation of the new Mass, noted that this new Mass departs from the Catholic faith in whole as well as in detail, in the whole theology of the Mass in whole as well as in detail. But it's a very gravely ambiguous and evil Mass. And this mass also has in its missile error and heresy. And so this missile, therefore, is extremely bad. And so what happens? Archbishop Snyder says as well, says good things about the new Amazon right. We shouldn't follow that. And yet at the same time accepts the new right, which has destroyed millions and millions of souls down the last 50 years. And that we're trying to, there's an attempt to make the Pope Francis problem another problem in the church, a new problem in the church. The Pope Francis problem is not a new problem in the church. There's nothing exceptional about Pope Francis. 
All he is is a normal novus ordo priest who became a bishop and who became elected the bishop of Rome and therefore is now the pope. And so that Pope Francis, all he is is a living breathing of the working that he's been doing for the last 50 years as a priest. He was already ordained a priest in the new rite and, 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 and he, is, he was a consecrated a bishop in the new rite and now he's a pope of, in, 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 uh, functioning in the new rite. And that he is living according to as he was trained in the, in, in, in the 1960s to be a modernist priest, modernist bishop, and a modernist pope. There's nothing exceptional about his reign. And yet they're trying to make it so. And the grave danger of this is to make Catholics pull away from their faith to say we've got to unite together against Pope Francis. And this is a trap. The scandal of Pope Francis is a scandal of Vatican II. And we must not fall for this, this uh, scandal, this uh, feigned scandal. And remember that we must stand firm in our faith and not have a false unity with our, with our conservative, quote-unquote conservative brethren against this modernist direction of the new world. In any case, I'll close here since it's very late. And God bless you all then. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.